also use it to create other patterns. He did the same thing with this. Now, we find a pinwheel in Rome, but all eight of these are exactly the same size. What he did, he likes this kind of triangle, so he used it here. He puts four of these in, which are slightly bigger than the regular um, 45 degree angle. It's slightly bigger, so these are slightly smaller. And it accounts for the fact that I had this crazy thing here with 38 degrees, and I'm going, what in the world do you do with the 38 degree? And the answer is, well, because this is 52. Well, 52 and 38 is 90, so you're back to a square corner again. So wherever he used this, it was right next to one of these kind of, of triangles in order to make it fit, yeah. But because he used this really weird size, this really weird size, it really puts a, puts a signature on some of these on the, some right. of these floors. And what's unique about the 38 degree angle? Because it matches up with the 52. 52 because when you... Yes, but this, why? Why the 52? Yeah. Because this is 52, 64, 64. Yeah. This is when you make, right. when you, when you make that triangle inside of a square, it comes out 52, 64, 64, which is really odd. You know, you're used to 45s and 30, 60, 90s. And right, stuff but like what I'm wondering is what, what is unique about that 64, 64 Because angle? the way, just because he liked that triangle that fits inside of a square. Uh -huh. And he uses it, when you look in Roman patterns, you rarely, rarely, rarely ever see it, but here it's all over the place. Are you still making, are you making more? Or are you done well, as much as you can go? Not as far no, as you okay. can go. <laughs> now, since I was over here last, I was over here for the conference, we added this piece, and we added this piece. These have been added since the last conference. These have been since so people found. find them in yep. the scene? Yeah, the, yeah. And they're sifting over there. They found them over there, and they send them over to me. We're going to another tile. Wow. Or, oh, but, yeah. So they let me know what they've got. That's amazing. Yeah, so I get these, these calls from over there. You know, we found this, we found that. Do you need one of these? Yes, we need one of those. Okay. Do you know where it goes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. How did you get interested in this? I'm a mathematician. Yeah. And so working on the sifting project, when I started seeing all these geometric tiles coming in, I asked, is anybody working on how do you do a reconstruction? They go, no, right now we collect them, we catalog them, and we have them put away and everything. But nobody's working on it. He said, do you want to do it? And I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> so that's how I got started. I volunteered. And that was eight years ago, and I've been working on it ever since. Wow. And now, you know, that we had a number of this, okay. Okay, let's release this to the public. And it's like really good timing, you know, that we release this about the same time that the UN is saying there's yeah. no Jews on the top of the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a break. You know, the UN has lost their brain or their ability to think. So we're very glad that we put this out about that time. Yeah, you know, about this time that they're saying one thing and we're saying, guys, you have no idea what you're talking about, okay? Here it is, right here. Not only do we know that Herod was up there, we even know what his floors look like. And here, if you want to hold a piece of the second temple in your hand, I'm going to put it in your hand for you. You know, here you go, second temple right here. Wow. And we let people pick these up, and they go, "You're crazy! Let people touch them." I go, "No, we want people to hold it in their hand and to say it's real." We had a temple. This is part of it. This is not just a drawing on a piece of paper. This is not just an illustration somebody did in the book. This is a real life piece. You know, this is what was up there. This is what everybody walked over when you came up for the Shalosh Regalim, when you went up there for, for Sukkot, and you brought your sacrifices, and you'd be walking around on the floor. You're walking on all these. This is what your ancestors did, and you get to hold it now, too. And so this is why we want to come um, and to feel it and to touch it and to know the reality of it. And don't believe a thing that the UN is saying. Well, well don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what you found, and you figured yes. this is part of this. Yeah, it's 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 a 135 degree angle in there, so it's mm. like okay, it's probably part of an octagon. This is a pattern that was used at Banyas, um, oh. Caesarea Philippi up north. There is a building up there. It's not down in the town part. It's up on a hill, and it appears to be a Herodian palace that nobody knew about. In Banyas? In Banyas. Uh, Ava wow. Netzer dug there two summers. They did two short seasons digging up there. I'm going to actually, I may actually get up there tomorrow. We're trying to get up there. One of the archaeologists that I've actually worked with a few years ago. So you and I are getting ready to publish the Banyas site. And so we're going to go up there tomorrow. Hopefully we'll get there and take a look around at that site. But we have a lot of tiles from there. And a few years ago, somebody handed me a box and said, can you do something with this? And I said, yes, later. <laughs> At the time, I was working on the floor for the Israel Museum exhibit. 
And so after that, I started working with it and realized from the shapes of the pieces and everything that this was the pattern. Now, it's bigger, you know, it's a bigger octagon in the middle, and they repeated the pattern all over the whole floor. So there would have been close to 25,000 tiles in this floor. And I have a box of 170, and I'm going, that's all right, I can put this together. So even though you have less than 1% of the tiles, you can actually put it all together and realize what the pattern is. So even with these, although we don't have very many pieces, like this pattern, this was the only one I had to start off with. I had this one, and I figured out what the pattern was based on simply all oh, that pattern. Piece. I mean, yeah, how did you this, get to this? Ah, because this is that. this stone. Ah. When you wet this, it's, it, this turns really bright yellow. Yeah, this is called Breccia di Aleppo. It is not from Aleppo. It's from Greece. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why they call it Aleppo, but anyway, it's this material, and I just took it from uh, from on the internet. I just got a piece of the material, you know, to fill in the space. But it's it's this material here. Like that one. Fantastic. Oh, we have a piece of it. Do you have an archaeological background? No, my first degree was in math, but the minor in statistics, and then I started on my master's in statistics, but didn't finish it because we had to move. Later on, I got a master's in Jewish studies, so I have the Jewish history and I have the math. And over here, math plus history equals archaeology. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stuff plus a lot of stuff equals archaeology. Yeah. Oh, okay. where, where did you do the Jewish studies? Um, Hebrew College in Boston. Oh, okay. And then my, my bachelor's degree in math was in Virginia Tech. So it's, I never thought I'd be doing this with a math degree. Fantastic. Isn't that great?